Hello and welcome to Model Kit Stuff and a first impressions video this time looking at Trumpeter's 1 to 350 scale um, Admiral Hipper as she was in 1941. Now this is a, a German heavy cruiser um, part of um, three cruisers that were all basically built on the same lines um, the others being the Blücher and the more famous Prince Eugen. So the HIPAA was built under the Anglo-German Naval uh, Treaty, um, so was supposed to come in at 10,000 tonnes, um, but secretly um, it was built at around about 16,000 tonnes. Um, so she did see quite a lot of action during the war, um, mainly at the early part of the war. Um, she led the assault on Trondheim, um, she was um, quite active in um, the Atlantic Ocean. She sank the British destroyer HMS Glowworm. Um, she, would, she did some commerce raiding, um, sinking a number of merchant vessels. Um, and then she um, operating out of Brest, as I remember. Um, and then she did um, a, a, um, a dash um, via the Denmark straight back to Germany. Um, um, and was operating in the Nor Norway area um, against Soviet Union um, Atlantic convoys. Um, she was involved in the Battle of the Barents Sea um, in December of '42, um, destroying um, um, and sinking another destroyer um, and a minesweeper, HMS Bramble. Um, but then she got quite severely damaged um, by the cruisers um, Sheffield and Jamaica. Many people attribute this ship to Hitler's um, order to scrap the battle fleet. Now she wasn't scrapped but she was certainly uh, decommissioned for repairs and those repairs were never really um, uh, done and she sort of swung anchors until right at the end of the war when she operated again so she was involved with the evacuation of um, Germans from the uh, advancing Soviet Union forces um, late in the war, right at the end of the war, uh, and then a crew scuttled her. Um, and then she was scrapped in the late 40s, early 50s. So the box art, quite a nice little picture actually, um, says that the length is um, 588 0.3 millimeters and that a beam is 66 millimeters on this side we've got a picture of her um, with yellow turret tops um, and what looks to be um, dark grey uh, superstructure um, we have a little potted history there um, shows you a picture of the photo etch which looks to be primarily railings um, the ends are both the same, um, gives you the um, kit number which is 05317 and then on this side we have uh, a side profile again with the red turret tops um, and the camouflage pattern shows you the Arado AR196 aircraft um, and then um, just telling you that the kit's suitable for over 14s only and that is because it contains etch. So, let's have a look in the box. So the box we've got um, the usual trumpeter uh, style um, A4 stapled instruction booklet um, which is portrait. Um, we have a separate painting sheet and then as we can see we have the hull, which um, is packed separately, is waterline. The hull is waterline. Uh, and we have quite a lot of plastic. So let's start with the um, paint sheet. It's a single sided um, A3 sheet um, and it uses um, uh, two different paint charts, one for the aircraft and one for the ship. 
Now, as always, it's worth checking the paints. So you probably want to just check your um, references when it comes to the camouflage pattern um, and check that the period of time is correct for um, this pattern, whether the pattern's accurate and your turret top colours. Um, they did change their colours fairly regularly, so depending on what um, period of time you want to um, um, depict her. Obviously this is after a 1941 refit, so pretty much in a final operating uh, guise. Um, so it's calling out um, uh, Mr. Hobby, uh, Vallejo, Model Master, Tamiya and Humbrol. And they always seem to manage to put one Hobby Master colour down um, that you can't, that they don't cross reference. Um, and they've done that in both the aircraft and the ship in this instance. Um, so basically what they're doing is um, grey for the uh, for the dark grey camouflage, hull red, black for the bootstripe, um, another grey, a light grey for the um, both the hull and the superstructure. So I think that is wrong. Usually the hull grey is a different grey to the superstructure grey. So we'd need to check that. Um, tan, which I am guessing is for the decks. Um, gloss red, which would be for the turret tops. Gold will be for the propellers. And then orange yellow. I'm not sure what that's for. I can't see what that's for, unless it's for the inside of the ship's boats, possibly, as it's a slightly darker. But that's that, it, it's very basic, and that's the only reference to colour you'll get in the aircraft. They've got um, the two greens for the splinter pattern, but interestingly, show the underside of the aircraft is white, and I would have expected that to have been um, a pale blue, which is more normal. So again, you need to just check that. So on the front page of the instructions, we've got a side profile um, of the ship we're about to build. We have some read before you assemble um, notes which will tell you about um, recommended tools and that sort of thing. Um, then we've got some instructions on applying decals and then their key that will be used throughout the instructions. Then as is typical for a trumpeter we have a parts list starting with the hull. So we've got upper and lower hull um, a a blanking plate if we're doing it waterline, um, two deck halves, um, a main lower superstructure part which will be slide moulded no doubt, um, then the sprues, more sprues, decals, etch, slide moulded, um, secondary armament, or anti-aircraft guns. Uh, and then in step one, right, so right from the start, we have Trumpeter's usual very strange way of working. Um, so we're starting by building up the upper um, hull section by putting the two um, deck halves in. Okay, that makes sense. Then we're doing the ship's boats, which you're going to put on towards the back end of the build. So you're going to make those up and store them. So that's pointless doing it there. Um, then we have some sub-assemblies, capstans, um, main armament, um, light armament, anti-aircraft guns. So you're doing all of those and potentially putting those away for some time as well. Um, and then in step three, well that's interesting, step three we've got the lower hull on, but they're not actually showing you putting the lower hull on. Right, okay, so they're actually depicting the lower hull on there, but not telling you to put it together. There's no actual instruction to do that, and there's no instruction to say use the blanking plate if you're not using the lower hull. Okay. 
Um, so uh, in instruction three, we are adding some of the deck furniture parts, so the breakwater, capstans, um, anchors, and the main armament, all at that first juncture. Um, and then we've got torpedo tubes going on, um, some form of boxes, we'd have to have a look at those. Um, cable reels which see, appear to be countersunk into the deck, so I have to have a look at that. Um, and then the, the rear main gun. Um, yeah, so we've got some deck furniture going on, um, which is sensible. Whether I'd want to put the gun on right now, I suppose, doesn't make a big difference. Then we're building up the lower superstructure which looks um, nicely detailed um, and then in step five we're building up some further um, superstructure parts and then in step six we're adding the ship's boats I personally wouldn't be adding those until we put it on the superstructure but that's fine um, appears that we've got plastic ladders that's unusual trumpeter usually put photo etched ladders in so um, that's a bit disappointing I would I won't use plastic ladders because they just don't look right so um, yeah they've previously um, photo etched so why they've decided not to I'm not sure um, cheaper obviously maybe I don't know um, then we're building up um, another set of main armaments. This will be turrets um, B and C. Then we've got um, observation deck being built up um, and the superstructure around it. Again, more plastic ladders, um, all to be replaced. Step 9 has a number of different assemblies um, so we really need to dis divide these up into individual steps so that we can deal with um, aftermarket photo etch and stuff. Um, so there's some gussets going on to that structure, more um, cable or hose reels. We've got, um, that looks like the funnel with the um, searchlight deck going on. Um, oh no, it's the um, core structure for the uh, command tower. And we can see Admiral's Bridge there. Um, and then we've got um, radar, um, anti-aircraft uh, platform. And then as we move through here, we've got um, more structure which includes um, fire direction um, the armoured control centre there um, range finding okay looks like there's quite a lot of sub assemblies there and then in step 11 we pull all of that together um, and then we've got two cranes to build up and uh, a mass to put in and then in step 12 we're building up uh, what looks like rear superstructure area um, another observation deck more plastic ladders rear range finding um, the ship's catapult um, uh, the rear mast there Step 13, um, we're pulling that together, building up the hangar, uh, and then we are building up, that's the funnel tops there, um, more ship's boats, um, photo etch being put together there, which um, ends up being gantries on the funnels. See the great big ventilators there, they look nice. Um, we've got some photo etched ladders going in and the main mast being put together. 
seems to have some of the pipe work and stuff running up it, which is nice. Then we pull all that together. Now, I've not done any research, so I don't know how historically accurate any of this is. Um, and then in st step 17 is just mounting the superstructure all together. So you end up with one massive sub-assembly to be glue glued onto the ship. Um, looks like there's little caps that go in to make the... Um, B and C guns um, hosable. Step 17, we're just adding that main superstructure on. And look how delicate that is that you're trying to put on that deck and make sure it's flat. It's not how I will build it at all. Um, then, <laughs> well, that's interesting. Step 18, we're attaching um, these ship's boats in there um, slung under their davits and the two cranes then in ship in step 19 we're building the boats onto the davits that we attached in step 18 so that's, that's interesting I do, I do love trumpeter and make me smile um, right okay so I thought we'd already done this and that not shown it but what they're, what they're saying is, in step 20, build the underneath of the hull with your um, shaft lines and uh, screws and what appears to be a single rudder. Um, then in 21, build your um, aircraft up. Um, it appears we might have just one. Um, but we do have a folded wing option, which is lovely. Um, and then in step 22, decide whether it's full hull or not. And attach the lower hull to your completely built up upper hull. Never in a million years would you do that. Because um, if that don't fit and you've got to be filling, you, don't, you can't be filling and sanding a hull with all that on. Absolute nonsense. Um, yeah, um, the build sequence is um, a little bizarre, um, but that's the instructions. So um, 22 steps in all. In reality, you've got a lot more if you divide this up properly. Um, so, yeah, okay, it is what it is. Let's have a look at some of the photo etch. So we have uh, two frets here of railings and I'm glad to see we've got different types so we've got deck railings of which we've got quite a few and then we've got um, railings with different numbers of um, railing include them so we've got um, two bar three bar um, different spacing of four bar and then we've got the, the deck ones with the little um, stanchion supports visible um, so that's quite nice, and we've got two sheets of that, so plenty of railings. Um, standard stock thing, really. Um, and then we've got a separate little fret, fret which has the um, little um, surrounds for the uh, funnel gangways and those little ladders that we saw going on the, the main mast. And then we have decals so let's take a look and see what decals they have given us now trumpeter always um, fastened down their cover sheet which is something I like to see in fact Trumpeter's packaging is always very good. Okay, um, well these are quite thin actually, but they are damaged. So I can see in the light, we'll see if you can in a minute, that they're quite matte all the decals, which I like, but I think the uh, waxed paper has got damp. Can you see how it's sort of wrinkly? Um, 
and maybe stuck to the decal because it appears that the decal has lifted in places and the colour looks patchy as a result. Um, what we do have is um, two flags in straight or blowing in the wind formation. We've got the parts there to build up swastikas, stickers um, should we wish to, so we put those crosses in. Um, that makes a swastika. sticker. We've got a deck um, um, swastika sticker identification markings and yep uh, then we've got aircraft decals so we've got no depth markers um, or uh, we've got no um, um, heraldic shield to go on the on the front of the hull we've got no um, turret um, decals because they would have had shields and names on um, so it's a bit bereft of, of, of detail as always um, so uh, a bit disappointing as always even more disappointing that these appear to have been damaged in some way clearly before they've gone in them in the model box because everything else is packed unopened and sealed and this has been kept in dry storage once since I've had it um, the box isn't damaged in any way so this must have been damaged before it's gone in um, just a bit of moisture's got in it and uh, after the sheet's been added on so it's just stuck to the decals I don't know if you can see that in the light anyway it is what it is um, most of that will get replaced anyway um, so let's have a look at the hull so the hull is two piece whether you're doing waterline or full hull if you're doing it waterline you have this blanking piece Mine's actually slightly damaged. Um, you can see there's a little bit of damage there. So it's obviously slid around in the box and it is bent quite badly. You can probably correct it. Um, but we're not likely to be using that anyway. Um, the main hole comes in a bag with these um, bits of foam wrap around it. So let's just take off the two end protection caps um, and the first thing that I can see is that Trumpeter have correctly orientated the stern anchor now, that might be a strange comment but if you built their graph speed kit you know that they don't always get the direction correct <laughs> it was facing backwards um, we've got quite a nice level of detail all the eyebrows are on the scuttles we've got the hand rungs there we've got a molded on boom um, and then as we work through yeah the uh, there doesn't there's a little bit of distortion on some of these scuttles right here at the bow um, the the hose pipe shape looks not too bad um, there is no coat of arms lump now I don't know whether that is correct or not I'd have to check so maybe they removed it in the refit um, there's a fair amount of sink at the front end here um, And quite heavy mold seam at the back um, and then you've got slide molding seams on the top there but nothing that's difficult to get out um, no panel lines or welding lines or anything like that so it's pretty um, basically detailed as is the way with trumpeter kits um, build bilge kills look quite large actually I'm not going to say the size until I've checked my references, but they do look quite large, although very nicely moulded, nice and thin, uh, which I'm sure is not uh, far off the mark. Yeah, that's all good. It's all workable. Yeah, not a bad hull. Right then, sprue A and sprue C are in the same bag and they both deal with superstructure components so let's have a look at A first 
um, and what I can see is we've got quite a nice level of detail in terms of um, windows and doors and the window shapes all seem to be correct we've got the familiar rectangular ones um, common on German ships of that period and then we've got some scuttles as well um, there is um, hand drums or vertical ladders in a couple of places we've got some uh, boxes of some type fire equipment or something there um, we've got ventilators there uh, and what looks like a little bit of trunking or cable run there is some form of steps um, but the, when they're not steps but the the um, bulkhead is stepped so quite what that is I don't know so a different type of ventilation maybe um, then we've got support gussets molded in we don't have any cable runs or, or major trunking or hose reels or anything like that but there is quite a nice level of detail on there Screw C continues with the superstructure uh, and we can see we've got bits there for the command tower um, and the um, hangar um, just the same we've got some very nicely depicted uh, boxes deck boxes there against the bulkhead we've got uh, watertight doors um, we've got a nicely textured I think that's twisted uh, we've got a nicely textured bit of deck there all looks pretty good so sprue E has a collection of parts um, let's just ease that off and see what we've got underneath there right okay so we've got um, a couple of the ship's boats which are nicely detailed actually um, with um, a life ring on the top which is quite heavy and needs slimming down uh, we've got um, the rudder there that has no um, sacrificial anodes on um, admiral's bridge top um, propeller shaft supports we've got something relating to oh okay uh, we've got the cable reels which pretty basic actually um, we've got the foremast there the propellers which are not a brilliant shape um, yeah they're not brilliant um, we've got some pipe work there um, the pipe work that runs up the main mast um, the actual propeller shafts there they're quite nicely done um, other mass parts um, and platform and some plastic ladders why they've gone to plastic ladders I don't know that's backwards step next we have two sprue G's inside the same bag um, this has a lot of those um, plastic ladders on which I dislike um, we've got slide molded uh, turrets which are really very nice indeed we've got uh, rivet detail ladder detail um, correctly shaped ventilators not lumps at the back of it there's some flash on these parts um, and then we've got the viewfinder detail on the front and the rings for the blast bags so they're very nice um, two different types this one's a larger one with the with range finders this one has no range finders uh, we've got more cable or hose reels um, we've got the range finder tops which are probably slightly heavy but well depicted in terms of the detail um, 
so I really quite like those. Um, and then we've got some of the secondary armaments. You can see the detail on there. Very nice. Together in one bag are the two deck halves. Um, and as we look at those, there is no tabs or anything for meeting them. So there's a possibility that we'll have the two decks at a slightly different height, which could cause us a problem, particularly if we're painting the decks. Um, because any washers or anything will sit in that join line. So something to bear in mind. The actual deck itself is very well depicted. Um, the planking is very narrow. Um, yeah, looks very good. Um, as we go from the stern, we've got some stern anchor chain already molded on. We've got um, various deck fittings, hatches and so on that are already molded on. Um, we have a hole there for the rear anchor chain capstan and a solid bonnet um, and then various other I mean some of these look quite thick if you look at that that doesn't look great um, but otherwise it's okay if we look at the uh, forward deck we've got the Horse pipe openings um, correctly depicted. We just need the loop that goes over the top, stops the, the anchor bouncing around. Uh, the chain's already moulded on, and there's nothing wrong with that chain really. If you wanted to paint that up, you could do. Um, we have the steel deck section at the front, which is uh, correct, I think. I'm not sure whether the anchor chain direction is correct or not. I've not looked at any references on this. Um, sometimes they went on the same way and sometimes they went um, opposite ways um, but yeah that all looks okay so the next bag has two of the same sprue this is sprue F um, I don't know what I don't know what's gone on but there is some form of muck all over um, the parts uh, uh, th these parts are in the bag sealed so this has gone on in the factory um, so I'm not quite sure what that is um, but we have some very nicely moulded um, guns there uh, we've got torpedo tubes again very nicely moulded uh, then we've got um, search lamps which are Okay, I suppose a bit heavy for my liking. And they've moulded on the uh, rear detail, which would have been better as a separate part. Um, but under paint and a wash, you can get away with it. Um, there's some sink on the crane, which has no feature. Um, and then we've got some very nicely moulded anchor, um, the crane bottoms. Um, We've got a ship's boat there. Um, trumpeter ship's boats always tend to be um, totally smooth on the hull and their sidewalls tend to be quite thick and it's no different in this one. Quite thick sidewalls, featureless. There's no uh, lap planking detail or anything. Um, now, that it, it may well have been the case that this was smooth, but that probably would not have been... Um, and then we've got main guns there which are slide moulded and rifled out. Let's have a look what we've got underneath this little bit of foam. Right, we've got the um, davits for the ship's boats there. Nicely protected from any damage.
Sprue B now has um, a lot of the um, other deck spaces. So we've got um, observation deck, search, uh, search light decks, command deck. Uh, we've got the we've got the waffle path pattern on one. The others are wood decked. Um, none of these appear to be steel. Um, all very nicely done, I have to say. The um, splinter shields are lovely and thin. Yeah, that all looks very nice. There is no... Um, interestingly, I'm sure that is a mistake, but if you look at this, the planking in here, you can see the uh, butt joints. Um, it's a two-shift pattern every other. And then when you look at the planking on this one, there is no butt joints. So they've totally missed putting the butt joints in, and so you've just got runs of planking. Now if you're painting that, it's going to look wrong. And then, of course, we have the um, nameplate, which has a huge amount of sink behind the M and the P, where these... Um, stands are. It would be better if they were separate items you could glue on so we didn't have that sink. Um, the grammar is pretty good um, so you could actually use that. I don't like the fact that they put the scale on so I'm probably gonna sound that off if I use that at all but uh, Through D, um, we have many of the funnel parts here, um, which has some very nicely depicted ventilation at the bottom. Um, that's quite nicely done. Uh, what looks like the roof of the hangar, um, a catapult detail, breakwater, um, funnel cap isn't too thick, so that's okay. Um, We've got another ship's boat, the roof of the uh, armoured um, range finding um, structure. We've got the funnel top with the Atlantic um, shelter. Yeah. It's not mind blowing, but it's uh, definitely good enough. Not much to see on the other side. We have a bag that has their, or one of their standard um, display stands in, so I'm not going to take that out of the bag. Um, it's, it's standard and therefore doesn't fit anything. Then we have a bag which has the uh, deck for the lower superstructure. So it's a single piece. It has a slight bow in it, but I'm fairly sure that once glued down that will straighten itself. Um, now underneath here um, we can see there's quite a bit of um, the supporting frame structure which is nice to see. There is also some uh, ejector pin marks. Um, some are raised, some are sunk, um, some you'd have to deal with, some you can probably get away with because they won't be seen. Um, but the level of detail is nice. We've got the uh, framework there um, for the ship's boats. Um, we've got some features on the uh, barbette and um, we've also got quite a heavy seam there that we'll have to clean up. Um, but there's no, you know, it's a nice crisp moulding, there's no sink that's going to be visible on the deck areas and we've got open um, uh, stairwells there so that's nice. Yeah and they did put the butt joints on that. Then we have a bag which has um, three of these H sprues in there um, which have the um, anti-aircraft gun uh, tops in and they are absolutely beautiful. Um, they're so detailed, um, very very nice, really nice. But, uh, Probably the best um, parts in the kit, I would say. Um, 
and these are off the these are the same ones that are used on their Prince Eugen kit, which is an absolutely spectacular kit. Um, now, how do I know that? Because if you look on the back, it tells you. Um, but yeah, these are really nicely detailed parts, and you get six of them. Then we have two sprues that contain um, the um, Arado aircraft. Um, all clear parts, as is Trumpeter's Way. Um, I can see lots and lots of panel line markings on the wings at least, so that looks okay. Um, I'm not a big fan of the clear parts. I think it's difficult to see what you're constructing. So the canopy is actually just that. That's the only bit that really needs to be clear. Um, so I tend to mask that off in this situation and prime the rest of it before I do anything more because I can at least see what I'm doing then. Um, but yeah, the detail is nice. You get two. And that is the parts from the kit. Now because the kit comes with railings, you could actually build that kit um, straight from the box um, and it wouldn't look too bad. Now for me there's one or two things that would, would want changing like the plastic ladders that anyone who follows this channel will know I'm not a fan of. Um, so there is some aftermarket for it and usually I will buy into some level of aftermarket and this kit was no exception. So we'll start with um, the gun barrels. I have aluminium turned uh, gun barrels. Um, and these are model design ones. Um, and they just have better stepping on them. Um, so these will do you for Hipper or Prince or you can, um, I, I just think the stepping's better and the um, wall of the opening of the gun is better. So it's a small detail. Um, but something I'm prepared to buy into for uh, seven pounds, about five pounds actually. Um, I've also got some wood decks, so have them here from those people there. Now I've never used their wood decks before, um, and I've not actually opened the packet previously so we're going to open this now on camera and have a look and one of the first things that I've noticed about these decks um, and they look really nice actually is the fact that they have a three plank shift pattern and it strikes me that that might be a bit more accurate than what the two shift pattern on the kit. So you get some uh, blacked anchor chain and it's a matte black uh, with a slightly elongated loop, so looks quite authentic. Of course, it's not stud chain at this scale, um, but that's as good as you'd get in Pontos. That, so I like that, um, and it gives me something to replace the moulded plastic. And then so it has um, a backing on which is like paper and what I don't know is whether that's a peel off backing or uh, yeah it is yeah and then it's adhesive underneath there okay well that's actually easier to see that you've got it off um, it is very very thin I have to say um, and it's not heavy on the burn marks. So quite often on a wood deck, you'll find that at these sort of points here, uh, where the um, laser's stopping and, and going up a couple of times and meeting, it gets steadily darker and it doesn't look at all realistic. Whereas this, it's actually very nicely done. So we've got a three shift pattern We've got no excessive burn marks, it's thin, it's got a paper backing which is easier to remove. Um, I think that's really nice. Of course, the proof is in the fitting, it might be a 
country mile off. Who knows? Um, but yeah, that is really nice. Um, the instructions are basically what's printed on the back of this paper. Um, and as it's all in Chinese, we don't really know what it's telling us, but it seems to be dry fit it and trim it if required, take off the backing, fit the backing, press down. Pretty much what you'd do if you put in wood decking. So there is, or at least there was, uh, um, a big Ed set created for um, uh, the Admiral Hipper. I think there also was one for, for Blucher as well. And what usually happens with um, Edward is that they, they do a run of these and then they're no longer available as a big Ed set, but only as the individual components. And there's a, a small saving involved in the Big Ed. The downside of the Big Ed is you might end up getting something that you possibly you weren't necessarily going to buy into anyway. So you, you have to weigh up whether it, it's worth buying the Big Ed or the individual components. Now in this Big Ed set, um, you get two packs of figures. Um, then you get the um, etch upgrade set and you get a set of railings. So let's have a quick look at those. So the two um, frets of figures um, are the self-adhesive fold-over pre-painted type. So basically what you do is you snip the figure off, you fold it over, there's a little bit of adhesive at the top, you can see here, um, and um, that holds the two figures together. By folding it over, you make the figure a little thicker um, and it doesn't, doesn't look quite as two-dimensional, although he still does look a bit two-dimensional. Um, and then you um, glue the figure wherever you like. Now, my experience is they're a real pain to, to glue in and you end up with them resting against railings and door frames and things like that to, to make them look right. Um, well, at least make them stand up. Um, I, the other experience I've had with this particular type of um, etch figure is that the adhesive isn't very strong and fails after time and you can come back to your model a month, two months later to find that all your figures have suddenly split at the head like some axe murderer has been round the ship. Um, and so I, I'm a little wary of these. Um, but we've got them, so we might well use them. Um, and if you don't want to use them on the Hipper, um, and you know, I could use them on any of my 1350 German ships, so they might be good for populating the um, uh, Prince Eugen as, as we plan to go to town on that. Now, the railing set um, is a single sheet, it's quite comprehensive. Um, it also includes the um, hull. Um, access ladders um, and um, it has the little um, little deck area that's that um, juts out so that they can see how um, mooring cables and the like uh, are progressing um, and they have some particular shaped railings for where you need them so um, better than the um, railing supplied in the trumpeter kit um, no doubt you've got some cut to size and things like that which is helpful and you can see here we've even got some that are shaped which which will be a lot easier to put up than um, the ones that were supplied just in the lengths from trumpeter so uh, even though you've got railings you can certainly upgrade the railings with uh, with the edward etch uh, and you might find these simpler to fit now when it comes to the main set, um, we'll take a little bit of a closer look and see what we get. Now on the surface, it looks like there's not a lot actually involved in the set. There's a single sheet of etch. Um, but when we look at the instructions, we, we can see that there's some really important detail being included. Uh, and one of the ones that I really want to point out um, is these little rails here. These are low foot rails which sit behind the um, railing that goes around the outside of the ship. And there, there were a feature on um, all three of this class of ship. Um, and they're 
omitted completely by trumpeters so they're a really nice nice to have um, they're, they're a fairly large feature so they're good to have we've got anchor chain we've got um, a new uh, breakwater which invariably will look a little bit more to scale um, we've got some little opening um, lids for some of the deck fittings um, and then we've got some replacement parts just to give you a little bit of finesse on for example the um, torpedo tubes here um, a lot of what Edouard do, if you're familiar with Edouard, you'll know this, but a lot of what they do is actually enhancing what's already been included in the kit. So you can see here that there's hand wheels being put on. We're replacing the anchor chain. Anchor chain stops. Um, we've got um, cable or hose reels to go on. Um, on the ship's boat, for example, removing the thick plastic moulded life-preserving life ring with an etch one, um, which means you can pre-paint it before you put it on, which is handy. Um, and then you've got things like the um, the railing for the uh, canvas covers on the on the back of the boat, and various fittings, which is always uh, nice and helpful. So you can go to town if you wish. There's a whole selection of doors, and it has question mark open or closed. So you can do a bit of animation on the ship if you like. Also means you can correct positions, um, uh, and you can choose which ones you want to to replace or not. Although it does show you in the instructions which ones to to replace. Now, one of the things you can do if these doors are proud, which I think they were as we went through, uh, what you can do is just sand flush the little fittings on them, and then cut the front door face off and glue them on if you're not wanting to show them open. Um, there's also um, some uh, scuttles included um, and, um, and things like ladders and the viewports for the, for the guns. And you can choose whether you want to use those or go with what was provided in the kit. So you can see here, much of what, what we're doing here is just replacing the doors. Uh, and again, it's a very personal thing whether you want to replace the doors. You do get the shutters for all the uh, windows and scuttles though, which is um, always nice. So one of the things that I always like to try and modify on a ship if I can, is the um, boat chocks that the ship's boat sits on. Uh, in plastic they're always a solid lump. In reality it's framework and the etch can really show that framework off really nicely, so I like to do that. Um, we've also got some uh, new support stanchions here which will look better than the plastic ones um, and when I look at them they've even got some of the pipe work against them as well which I'll as you see here you can see you've got the stanchion leg and then running next to it is like a gutter um, so that's nice um, all the plastic ladders replaced that's a that's lovely that's what we really want to do anyway um, and then you've got little sections of of um, deck, um, tiny modifications being made um, or additional bits that couldn't be moulded in plastic but certainly could be done in etch. Um, so it's all improvements and minor enhancements really. Now as always the, they tend to tackle the masts, um, the yard arms and um, the cross sections on the masts. Uh, you thin them out, you've got a bit of rigging already etched on, it, it adds quite a bit quite easily to it. Um, there is some modification to the cranes if you choose to, which will just help them look a little bit more lifelike. Um, and there's a replacement for the um, thick plastic catapult, um, and that usually looks quite good, the etch replacement catapults. And then on this final sheet, um, you've got it's the same sort of thing, it's all the same sort of stuff, it's adding to the ship's boats, replacing ladders and doors and, and boat chocks, uh, and you do get a nice replacement uh, funnel cap top, which is nice to see. Um, and then there's um, some modification, removing the tabs on the um, boat davits and putting little walkways on. So it's all small little details that just 
help bring it to life. So there we have it, um, Trumpeter's 1 to 3 50 scale um, heavy cruiser the Admiral Hipper, as she was in 1941. What do I think? What is my first impression? Well, uh, my first impression is it's a fairly stock trumpeter offering. Um, you get um, standard approach to the instructions. Um, in, in one respect, the instructions are nice and clear because of the way they um, lay things out and space things out on the page. Um, on the other hand, there is really no logic to the, the build sequence. Um, so you need to construct your own build sequence, um, as I always do, as you know, if you follow the channel. Um, in terms of the plastic parts, um, that they're, again, um, uh, the usual good standard for trumpeter. I'm not expecting any real fit issues. There was no major issues with, with sync or flash or distortion. Um, or um, ejector pin marks or anything like that. There are some slide moulded parts which are quite nicely done. There's some nice detail on the guns, um, uh, particularly some of the secondary armament. Um, so, uh, yeah, what I've not done is check the accuracy. And because this kit is made by Trumpeter, that is an absolute must-do. Um, there is a, a, a little tendency from Trumpeter to make the odd mistake and particularly when they're doing um, a run of kits like they did with this one um, where they are doing um, sisters or, um, or alternative versions of the same thing um, they can get a little bit mixed up from time to time and we've seen that recently with their 1-200 to Scharnhorst release. Um, so you do need to check your references, make sure that you, you're happy with the paint scheme that you're going to do um, to the period of time and that you're happy that you've got um, the, the details right as you want to depict it. Um, what I would say though is um, because they put the railings in, um, you could build this kit straight from the box and have something that looks um, more than half decent as, as an Admiral Hipper. Um, if you want to go to town on it, you don't need much more than um, the um, Edouard photo etch set. Um, yeah, it, you know, it, it covers everything that you need. If you take your time cleaning up things like masts, you don't really need brass replacements. Um, there is nothing in there that glares out, needs to be changed. So, um, in my case, the decals were a bit ruined, but I'd buy extra decals anyway because these were falling short of, of what's needed. Uh, and, and certainly you need some additional depth markers and the like. But um, all in all, it's a nice little kit. Um, Trumpeter have, have done a, a reasonably good job on it. Um, and putting aside the possibility of there being some errors that I've not detected because I've not done any um, background research on the kit we're just taking a literally a first impression of what's in the box it all looks uh, very nice and and easy to build up so uh, yeah if you're interested in an Admiral Hipper uh, there's no reason why you wouldn't get something quite nice out of this so I hope having a look through this has given you um, um, some help uh, in making a decision as to whether you want to buy into this kit or, or not um, We've already looked at the Prince Eugen, which I think is a nicer kit overall. Um, and we will do a review of the Blue Car at some point. Okay, thank you very much for looking in, everyone. Um, enjoy your modelling, and I will see you very soon. Mm -hmm.